Hello and welcome to this video on academic appeals. This is designed as a guide for all students here at St George's. I'm the head for MBBS assessment, uh, but the principles of this talk apply to all students here. So as a general rule, um, students who believe their uh, assessment marks meet the grounds for review may be eligible to request this under the academic appeal procedure. Uh, there are a couple of uh, things to remember with this. Uh, you have to apply within 10 day working days uh, from notification of your results. Um, it is only under exceptional circumstances that we review anything beyond this date. Uh, you have to have a very valid explanation for why it's late. And it has to be that you appeal under one of the three permitted grounds. Um, I'll go through those individually in a few moments. It's really important that as your part of your application, you pre present a convincing narrative in your application to support why you believe you have a right to appeal. And if you feel that you uh, need to appeal, uh, we judge each individual appeal on its individual merits and we support your right to do so if you feel you need to. Uh, there is no prejudice whatsoever against any students who have appealed. What's really important, there's a link here to the academic appeals procedure. Um, if you are thinking of appealing or definitely going to appeal, it's hugely important that you read this document in its entirety before you go ahead and appeal. It's there to help, it's here, there to guide you through the process and give you all the information you require. There are three grounds for appeal uh, and only three. Um, you, you absolutely have to appeal under one or more than one of the three. You can apply under all three if you, if you feel that you have the grounds to do so. Uh, and your application has to be in keeping with a good argument why you meet the, uh, the grounds for appeal. So you can only apply under the three things. So first one is that the results as, as presented to you have been affected by a, an administrative error. So the sorts of things that might happen here are if you believe that the wrong result was given to you, you know, some mess up in a, in a spreadsheet or something like that. Uh, the second one is that the exams themselves or that the board of examiners meeting were not conducted in accordance with the schemes of assessment or approved procedures and regulations here at St George's. So you believe that the rules and the scheme were not applied fairly to you. The third one is that your performance has been adversely affected by illness or some other relevant factor, such as a personal problem, which for some good reason, you were unable to make known to the Board of Examiners uh, in time for the Board of Examiners meeting, or that the Board of Examiners had failed to actually take that into account properly at the time of the meeting and you'd already informed them. There are some things that you cannot appeal against and the commonest problem is people trying to appeal against academic judgment. There is no provision for appeal against the academic judgment of either individual examiners or the board of examiners as, as a group. The Academic judgment is basically that judgment made by members of staff who mark your work. So they have the ones who mark your essays, your assignments, uh, any written exams, any clinical exams, or indeed clinical attachments. And the reason that you cannot appeal against it is that the authority for those judgments is based on their expertise as academic and or clinical members of staff. It's, it's not only the individual examiners that you cannot appeal against the racket jamic judgment. It is also the collective decision of the board of examiners as well. So the bottom line for this is if just because you do not agree with the mark you've been awarded, you cannot appeal based solely on that. So the other things you cannot use as a, as a grounds for appeal, academic judgment I've mentioned, you cannot do so under a lack of awareness of the relevant procedures or, or regulations or timescales. They are all in the public domain, very um, reachable. So you cannot say I was unaware of it. It's also for extenuating circumstances that 
particularly retrospectively, when you say, well, I had all these problems coming up to the exams, those are the sorts of things you should be telling us about in advance if you believe that they are likely to affect your exam performance and then the board can take them into account at the time when the results come out. So it's not a place for retrospecting, re retrospective reporting of problems that have been going on for some time. It is also not a vehicle for complaints about uh, project supervision or your course during the academic year. There is a separate process for that. And particularly for things like long term illness or disability, we have other procedures in place, such as reasonable adjustments or interruption of studies, policies uh, that sh really should take into account all of those things. So those are all the things you cannot appeal about. I've already mentioned that your academic appeal forms need to be submitted to the student conduct and compliance team within 10 working days of notification of your pass fail results. So that's basically as soon as you receive them. Uh, most of this is done online nowadays, um, but many of you will receive uh, letters through the post, often with more extensive breakdowns. Please do not wait for that to arrive. That can take several days just because of the vagaries of the postal service. Um, and that obviously reduces the amount of time you have available to you to appeal. So it's when they come out at the point at which they're published. Uh, I've already mentioned we basically don't accept them outside the 10 working days unless you can give us a valid explanation and provide some evidence to back that up why you could not do it within those working days, 10 working days. The form itself has got several sections to it. Uh, the first one is your personal details so that we know who is who is appealing. Um, you have this is because this is about individual exam results. It has to be by the person who is appealing. We also need to know which program you're on and which assessments or assessments you, you believe require a review. And then of those three grounds for appeal that you can do so, you need to tick which one or more than one of them you believe you should appeal under. Now, the next bit is actually the most important bit. Is an, it is an open uh, narrative for you to write your case details. So this is the bit where you get us to provide us with your story, your narrative as to why you believe you meet the criteria for appeal. And basically, we can only go on what you tell us. So if you provide a convincing argument, you've got a much higher likelihood of your appeal being upheld. If it's lacking in uh, information for us to make a judgment, it's much more likely that you will not have a successful appeal. We also ask you to provide supporting documentation, particularly if there are as an illness or something personal going on. So a medical certificate from your GP or a hospital doctor, for instance, uh, details about a bereavement if that's happened. And we do require supporting documentation. Then there is a section on the outcome of the application, and we ask you to outline what outcome you were actually seeking. So it could be that you wish to have the attempt discounted if your appeal is successful because you believe there were extenuating circumstances. But we do ask you to actually put what you want to happen as an outcome. Uh, Please note that one thing that's hardly ever happens is the result is extremely unlikely to ever change. Um, th these are assessments that invariably contribute to an awardable degree. So it's extremely important to understand we cannot guess what an outcome would have been and change them. So something like a discounted attempt is much more likely if, uh, if an appeal is upheld. Uh, the only time when we would ever consider changing a, a, a published result is if it was down to administrative error and the result was on review erroneous. At the end, there is a declaration that you are telling the truth and everything is honest and you have to sign to that as well. It's extremely important that you are honest at all times in your appeal. We occasionally and very sadly have had students who have either made stuff up or have been rather liberal with the truth. And uh, that is an academic offence. So please be honest at all times. And then 
This will then go to the student conduct and compliance team who will look at it. They will get opinions from usually a panel of people who work on the course that you are on. And it'll be one of two things. Either the appeal will be upheld and then an agreed outcome will be decided. Um, it may or may not be what you wish the outcome to be. Um, it generally is, but sometimes we agree a different outcome and inform you of that. Or if the grounds are not met and uh, the appeal is not upheld, then the published result will stand. If you're unhappy with this, there is a second stage process uh, for this as well, but that's outside the remit of this talk today. How quickly will you receive uh, your uh, appeal outcome? Well, it's usually within 15 working days. There are, however, certain times of the year when the team dealing with this, it may take a little bit longer. And typically that's in the summer when there are lots of exams all happening at the same time across the university. Uh, but we will notify you accordingly if the timescales are impacted. You do have some other sources of support in terms of your appeal. There is the, the student union are very helpful for this. They help lots of students with this uh, over the years. And the vice president for education and welfare and his colleagues, one of their roles is to help you go through and give you advice about that process and the application and the application form. The student conduct and compliance web pages have lots of information as well. So please look at them and read them. Uh, we have Together All, which is a support group for students and sometimes actually discussion with your personal tutor. It's a really good thing to do if you get into this position. Uh, they obviously cannot actually do the uh, appeal for you, but they can certainly give you a view on whether they feel you have grounds, uh, also point you towards other sources of support as well. So I hope you found this helpful. And again, please read the web pages and if you get into the position of requiring to appeal, and I'll thank you for listening.